Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to the show. We're going to talk about a great topic, dairy beef. It's something that is new in our beef industry, it's new in the dairy industry, and it's still feeding cattle. We're going to have a great guest today, Dr. James Coltis, who's right here at Iowa State University. He's in our animal breeding and genetics section. He's a key member in the industry that's helping work with the genetics in these dairy beef crosses. It's going to be a great show. Stay tuned. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning is brought to you by ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to zenpro.com. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. James Coltis, and we're at Iowa State University in the Department of Animal Science, where Dr. Coltis is an assistant professor and he is one of our leaders in our animal breeding and genetics section. And um, we have quite a history of animal breeding and genetics at Iowa State University. Yeah, very long history, back to Jay Lush and folks working in all species, especially on the dairy side where I'm working today. Yeah, when you think about EPDs and Wilhelm and Lush and, and all of the things that came out of your section. Um, I'm glad you're carrying on a, uh, the great tradition. Appreciate it, Dan. Yep. So with that, we're melding some EPDs. <laughs> we're yeah. bringing the beef and the dairy industry together. And I guess the question that most people have is, is you know, why are dairymen doing this dairy beef cross? Sure, so dairy beef has kind of evolved over the years. I, I mean, historically, folks used to use beef because they thought it was a good calving ease option for their heifers, but as we got more into genetic improvement, that kind of went away, and then it came back again when the, the price of those uh, dairy animals for beef went down. We're selecting those animals totally differently, right? We're, we're going for, a, for milk production, for fertility, for functional traits related around dairy that are just quite a bit different than putting on the right kind of muscle for beef. So. Uh, to, to increase that value, we've started breeding back to beef again, selectively, and really genomics and sex semen have allowed us to do that. Yeah, so talk to me a little bit about on the dairy side, now that you got sex semen, you can make sure you get your heifers out of your top end of your cows? Yeah, so you can essentially go through with genomics instead of it being like a coin flip or less, we've got good accuracy in picking those best genetic animals. and can identify the ones we really want to breed to dairy, and then those lower end ones that maybe we don't want to keep the replacements from might make great candidates to breed to beef bulls. Yeah, they're still making good milk. They're just not in the top third. That's right, so we can let them you know, continue, pay their bills for that cost. And that's another thing about you know, the, the dairy beef side is it costs a lot of money to raise a heifer and it'll take you two or three lactations to pay off that animal and start making money. So if you need to bring profit faster, you can sell a beef cross calf that might be worth a bit more and then you can take those genetics out on the lower end genetic animals so that you focus on really raising the best quality dairy animals moving forward for milk production in the dairy. Yeah, and, and so it makes some, some interesting phone calls because now we have dairymen that are trying to feed cattle and we have you know, uh, cattle feeders that are trying to figure out you know, how many of these are gonna hit the market and kind of what's this gonna do to our, 
to our beef market as far as having enough cattle to, to feed, but or having too many cattle to feed if it'll soften that, that feeding market. Just different things floating around in the industry on that. Yeah, and, and I think dairy producers know how to do a lot of things well, but they often don't think about those beef calves because they're either uh, something they're trying to sell out of the, the production system because they don't have the facilities, or they just haven't been thinking about how do we produce the highest quality beef. So there's that communication aspect there, I think, to link up with the folks on the beef side to produce a, a better product long term. Yep, and uh, you know, that not very often that they're wanting to get to 90% concentrate in a finished ration and you know, feed a little more, a uh, qu- little higher quality hay than, than we do in the yeah. cattle feeding industry. Yeah. So. Right. But uh, folks, this is just a tremendous topic. Um, we have one of the, the experts uh, in the world here uh, to talk about the dairy beef. And we're going to take a break now. When we come back, we're going to jump into some of your research. And we're going to talk about some of the crosses that he's been doing and things that he's learning about dairy beef, the dairy on beef and beef on dairy crosses. You're watching Doc Talk. We'll be right back. If you miss Caregiver Camp this year, don't worry. We'll have more camps in 2022 at Knopfsinger Ranch in Benkelman, Nebraska. The camp is an opportunity for new and veteran employees to receive one-on-one instruction in a relaxed environment from Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, Dr. Kip Lucasavage, and Ted Howard on cattle handling, horsemanship, animal health, disease detection, and team interaction. At Caregiver Camp, people learn how to grow, how to trust, and open lines of contact between animals and humans. These principles will allow you to build relationships with your own livestock and team. For more information and future dates, visit our events page at packdvms.com. Innovative low-stress cattle handling equipment is key to efficiency and safety. At Daniels Manufacturing Company, we design systems using the best materials. We work with top producers from all over the world who use Daniels products on their operations. We concentrate on quality, prioritizing the safety of the animals and their handlers. Each product is carefully crafted and inspected to ensure your system will last for many years. Whether your operation is small or large, Daniels Manufacturing Company can design a facility to meet your needs. Visit us online or call to see how we can improve your cattle handling facility. Producers know stress costs money. It puts their cattle at greater risk of illness and can be a substantial drain on animal performance. That's why ZenPro developed ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle. Formulated with ZenPro's patented trace mineral technology, ProFusion Drench is a no-script, no-needle performance supplement proven to rapidly replenish essential nutrients lost during times of stress. For optimal results, use ProFusion Drench with ZenPro Performance Minerals in feed as part of a complete nutrition program. To learn more, go to ZenPro.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. James Coltis. Dr. Coltis is an assistant professor here in the Department of Animal Science where he is in the animal breeding and genetics section and he uh, works with dairy genetics and beef genetics. has been involved with some pretty unique uh, studies down at McNay Ranch uh, where we looked at 25 years of single trait selection for quality grade, mm-hmm. which turned out a lot of prime carcasses in those calves. Yeah, and a few good AI bulls too. Huge AI bulls. But now we're working at something a little bit different. You're taking that beef experience and your dairy experience and you're literally, literally crossing them. So <laughs> yeah. talk to me about what you're doing with some of your research. Yeah, so there hasn't been a lot of research on the the beef dairy cross side, especially in the U.S. There's been a little bit of work done in Europe, um, but the way that they look at at meat quality and carcass quality is really different from the way that that we do here. So not a lot of thought put so much on the marbling side or or maybe on uh, some of the the aspects of of muscularity, dairy versus a a beef type carcass, for example. Um, Our research has really worked on first trying to understand what's out there, characterizing the the carcasses uh, from different dairy by beef crosses, um, looking at strengths and weaknesses, because part of what we need to understand, there's so many options for breeds 
that you can cross these animals to, what's the best breed cross? And, and obviously that's gonna differ for different producers and based on their different goals. And then moving forward, the other question is, well, can we better optimize our dairy animals in those crosses and use some of the genomic tools that we've used on the beef side alone or the dairy side alone and identify those beef bulls that are maybe better for a beef by dairy cross? One thing that was interesting to me is that, you know, we went Cavanese, 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 little calf, little calf, little calf, and now they're learning that you maybe you don't want to go too small because then you wind up with a smaller heifer or one that isn't the right size at the right time. And, and now they're, they're even doing that with their dairy cows. They're, they're, they're going back to pelvic measurements and, and which cows can handle having a bigger calf and maybe not going to that smallest. Yeah, so there's, there's some, uh, I think, some fine uh, compromise there, if you will, on, on what you want to do. And, and the Holstein breed itself has made a lot of change in that area. Um, speaking of history, uh, Jeff Berger and Gene Freeman were involved in those calving use evaluations on the dairy side at Iowa State. And through the last 30 years or so of selection, the, the dairy breed has changed a lot. We actually have less need for some of that calving ease. So the way that we think about how we select bulls has differed and, and the way that we've selected some of our dairy breeds, especially the Holsteins that have used that calving ease evaluation, you know, the, the calves are, are born in, a, in an easier way. We're thinking more about positioning of that calf and, and pelvic size and those aspects of, of calving ease. Um, and, you know, those calves still grow and, and, and become big. So, yeah, I mean, you can kind of you can kind of balance that and don't have to worry so much about a small calf. You have a smaller calf, bigger calf, as long as you end up uh, obviously selecting on those other things to well, get the attributes you want. And as you're thinking about all these different crosses, different size calves and different muscling gives you more flexibility than yeah. on what you can cross with like a Charlet limousine versus Angus, Hereford, things to that nature. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and especially as you get into thinking about that, then the, the contribution of the cow in her calving ease is so important because you might be able to handle a little bit more highly muscled beef calf. Yep. Well, we're going to get into more of this and we're going to talk about some of the results that you've been seeing with the different crosses and the different breeds on dairy. But it's just a tremendous area of interest and uh, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're watching. We're going to take a break and we come back more with Dr. James Coltis. Time is money on the farm, and your cows are less productive when they're stressed. The Alertus on-farm test from IDEX allows you to quickly test cow side and identify open or pregnant cows within minutes on your schedule in the parlor, barn, or chute. It's more efficient for your farm, very simple to use, and puts you in control. With minimal training and reliable, fast results, sample-based pregnancy testing is better for beef and dairy producers. Learn more at IDEX.com slash DocTalk. Innovative low-stress cattle handling equipment is key to efficiency and safety. At Daniels Manufacturing Company, we design systems using the best materials. We work with top producers from all over the world who use Daniels products on their operations. We concentrate on quality, prioritizing the safety of the animals and their handlers. Each product is carefully crafted and inspected to ensure your system will last for many years. Whether your operation is small or large, Daniels Manufacturing Company can design a facility to meet your needs. Visit us online or call to see how we can improve your cattle handling facility. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. If you miss Caregiver Camp this year, don't worry. We'll have more camps in 2022 at Knopfsinger Ranch in Binkelman, Nebraska. The camp is an opportunity for new and veteran employees to receive one-on-one -on -one instruction in a relaxed environment from Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, Dr. Kip Lucasavage, and Ted Howard on cattle handling, horsemanship, animal health, disease detection, and team interaction. At Caregiver Camp, people learn how to grow, how to trust, and open lines of contact between animals and humans. These principles will allow you to build relationships with your own livestock and team. 
For more information and future dates, visit our events page at packdvms.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. James Coltis, and we're at Iowa State University in the Department of Animal Science, where Dr. Coltis is an assistant professor in our animal breeding and genetics section been doing a lot of work with, with uh, some of these genetics, dairy on beef, uh, beef on dairy. Tell us a little bit about what some of your results, what you've seen in different crosses and different, different breeds. Sure, so uh, on the breed cross side, um, the, the data that we had available to us were uh, primarily Limousin, uh, Limousin Angus, or what folks call Limflex, uh, and then Simmental, and then the, the Simflex or Sim Angus crosses. Uh, and so primarily what we see, some of it's not so surprising. I mean, the, the Simmental and the Limousin definitely inject some muscling uh, into those offspring. I do think you see a, a bit of a, some attributes there from the, the Angus side that are not surprising um, in terms of having that good uh, meat quality, maybe a little bit uh, higher uh, back fat in some cases, especially on the Limflex side. And the, the Limousin really does inject some muscle some muscle in there and, and may have some uh, positive attributes for the ribeye area. Yeah, and that's one of the things too that when, you know, we always talk about a dairy ribeye versus a beef ribeye and that flatter ribeye versus uh, the round, uh, rounder shaped ribeye. So having some of those that are more muscle, maybe that squashes that ribeye bit in those crosses? Yeah, I, I, at least I hope so. One of our challenges is we probably need more, more understanding of the shape uh, of the ribeye, but I think those breeds that give you at least a little bit more uh, ribeye area, and then with some of these breeds like Limousin that have a, a bit more pop of muscle, I think, I think that does help. And you can see that folks that are working on those crosses are thinking about some of those breeds, even Charlet in some cases, to add some extra muscle to avoid that dairy type carcass that's not as valuable. Yeah, and I think that it's, it's interesting because when you see these calves and, and, and you, you start to think about qualifying or getting them into some of our different, uh, you know, beef uh, uh, programs, um, that shape and, 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 and validation of, of being, being consistent is going to be important. Absolutely. And we've seen in our studies, especially some of our, our genetic studies looking at genomics, that there are markers that will increase uh, ribeye area. But, and that's helpful, but to an extent, um, if it's a flat ribeye, it may not be as valuable as a, as a curved one. So time will tell where we go with that. I hope we can be involved in maybe developing some new traits to, to look at that shape as well. And that's one of the things, folks, that I have learned. I, I haven't been uh, that in tune with the, the genetic side, but you know, breeding and genetics is really, part of it is what's on paper and being able to figure it out. The other part is validation, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and and another aspect, we'll be getting some more of, of this data to really validate our results and, and see uh, in additional breed crosses what's going on and do we see the same kind of effects, uh, for example, of, of certain uh, genetic variants that may impact muscularity in one breed, do they do just as well in another? And that, that kind of comes back to that complementarity aspect or what we call gene combination across breeds. Yeah, and the good news is, is dairy is pretty streamlined and the genetics are, are very well validated, right? Compared right. to beef. Although one thing, you know, since we haven't selected on, on the beef side, it's very uniform on the, on the dairy side. And if you had a, a, a beef animal from purebred dairy, they're very consistent. But when we start looking at variability in some of these traits, since we're not selecting on them, sometimes there is some <laughs> wiggle there we don't know about. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see what we find out over time if there are some beef things that we kind of have ignored that maybe we could do something with in selection. Yep. Well, folks, big numbers of these animals are going to be hit in the beef uh, industry. Uh, they're going to be in our feedlots. Um, the more we learn, the better. We're going to, we come back, we'll be with Dr. Coltis, and we'll talk about some of the future directions and communication that's needed to raise these dairy beef crosses. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. 
This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Time is money on the farm, and your cows are less productive when they're stressed. The Alertus on-farm test from IDEX allows you to quickly test cow side and identify open or pregnant cows within minutes on your schedule in the parlor, barn, or chute. It's more efficient for your farm, very simple to use, and puts you in control. With minimal training and reliable, fast results, sample-based pregnancy testing is better for beef and dairy producers. Learn more at idex.com slash doctalk. Producers know stress costs money. It puts their cattle at greater risk of illness and can be a substantial drain on animal performance. That's why ZenPro developed ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle. Formulated with ZenPro's patented trace mineral technology, ProFusion Drench is a no-script, no-needle performance supplement proven to rapidly replenish essential nutrients lost during times of stress. For optimal results, use ProFusion Drench with ZenPro Performance Minerals in feed as part of a complete nutrition program. To learn more, go to ZenPro.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. ValleyVet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. James Coltis. We're in the Department of Animal Science at Iowa State University, where Dr. Coltis uh, is a tremendous teacher, tremendous researcher, and he is in our animal breeding and genetics section, one of our best faculty members, and just lucky to have you here and lucky to have you on the show. Thanks, Dan. Um, you know, as we look to the future, that I think that there's gonna be more of these animals, not fewer of these animals, and um, it's gonna come with the need of some communication. Yeah, and kind of as we discussed briefly, you know, these dairy producers haven't been thinking about producing beef and, and the way that they approach maybe some of the, the early life uh, calf uh, aspects and um, what bulls we select to produce the best beef animals, I, I think there'd be a lot of benefit from having that, that feedback from folks in the feedlot and talking about maybe where that extra investment may pay off. Yeah, I think on the genetic side, and then as a veterinarian, you know, the one thing I see is that, you know, colostrum, in those dairy beef crosses, n don't over vaccinate, right? We, there, there can be too much of a good thing and, and really ventilation and, and nutrition and, and working through that, but communicating with the people that they're going to to help with that health uh, is another aspect that we've got to manage. Yeah, and I, I mean, think, really thinking a lot about that beef calf the same way that we do about our, our dairy heifers and, yep. and taking just as good a care of them uh, as we do as our, our th with our heifer calves. Um, and and really thinking about, you know, how do we set that animal up for the best lifelong growth and health? Yep, and you know, I think there's one thing that we could talk to the dairy industry about too, is the, you know, some people are uh, trying to put in their own little feeding uh, feedlot at their dairy and feed the calves themselves, but you know, they could retain ownership and custom feed with, with feedlots and be, be a great consistent customer um, where they don't have to dive into cattle feeding and they have cattle feeding partners that'll help them make money to, to finish those calves. Right, and I think that's where there's a lot of opportunity because it's one thing to kind of hear this is the best way to do it, then it's another thing to say, here's my incentive on the bottom line, right? So yep. if you've got that retained ownership, you're seeing that animal through all the way, you're, you're participating in that profitability from a better, a better muscle, better marbled uh, a calf being sold, then yeah, I think it, I think it just kind of creates a better system. The other thing that we've discussed too, the one of the issues potential with these is, is that these calves are a little bit more prone to digestive disorders, which then leads to bloat or to, to liver abscess. And so management of that is gonna be, is gonna be a little different than, than when we feed uh, beef calves. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, interestingly, there's probably some, some opportunities on the genetic side to select for some improvement in some of those areas. We haven't thought about it. We don't have the tools yet. 
but much like we could use genetics to improve ribeye area or carcass area, things that we have today in those beef bulls, we could develop some of these kinds of things. And, and calf traits are starting to come along too, so we could benefit from that yep. as well in that young animal. Yeah, it's just tremendous when you think about the opportunities we have in front of us and what an important role genetics plays. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Dan. Folks, if you want to know what we do on DocTalk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian. For Dr. James Coltus, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and we'll see you down the road. Closed captioning is brought to you by ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to zenpro.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility.